in 1987 in a research laboratory at Eastman Kodak Company in Rochester, New York, Ching Tang and Stephen Van Slyke invented the organic light emitting diode. We have to suppose that these two talented young researchers had at least a broad general sense that their invention would lead to a wide variety of useful technological applications. But in 1987, at a time long before mobile phones and flat screen monitors became commonplace, Tang and Van Slyke could not possibly have imagined just how profound of an impact their invention would have. And so today, in the spirit of this conference, from lab to app, we are going to take a look at how the organic light emitting diode transformed the $200 billion display industry and ushered in the era of flexible displays. But before we do, we'll have to briefly consider some basic physics. The organic light emitting diode, as Tang and Van Slyke conceived it, consists of four layers deposited in sequence onto a glass substrate. The first layer is the positive electrode, which we call the anode. The second is the organic hole transporting layer, followed by the organic electron transporting layer, and finally, the negative electrode, called the cathode. By applying an appropriate electrical voltage between anode and cathode, Electrons, that is, negative charges, are injected from the cathode into the organic electron transporting layer, and positive charges, which in physics are called holes, are injected from the anode into the organic hole transporting layer. Under the influence of the externally applied voltage, these oppositely charged electrons and holes drift in opposite directions into the device, and when they meet at the interface between the hole and electron transporting layers, they create a photon that is emitted from the device and which we perceive as light. Now, over the years, this deceptively simple device structure has been continuously improved and optimized, and modern-day organic light-emitting diodes consist of as many as half a dozen or more organic layers, each serving a specific purpose and having a specific materials composition and layer thickness. As a result of all of this combined optimization, the efficiency, that is, the amount of electrical energy consumed by the device in order to generate light with a certain intensity, has improved dramatically from only about one lumen per watt to several hundred lumens per watt, making state-of-the-art organic LEDs the most efficient man-made light source today. The color of the light emitted by an organic light-emitting diode is determined by the properties of the organic molecules employed in the fabrication of the device, which means that it is relatively straightforward to fabricate organic LEDs that emit either red or green or blue light, which in turn means that it is relatively simple to create light simply by combining one red, one green, and one blue organic LED, light of any color of the rainbow, or of any wavelength of the electromagnetic spectrum, which happens to be precisely what is required in order to build a flat panel display. Now, for two, if not three decades, the dominating technology for flat panel displays of all sizes was the liquid crystal display, or LCD. In fact, up to just a few years ago, the vast majority of all smartphone displays were LCDs. This has changed in dramatic fashion. Today, Virtually all high-end mobile phones are equipped with an organic light-emitting diode display, 
and even a rapidly increasing share of medium and low-end mobile phones come with an organic LED display. Last year alone, 600 million smartphones with organic LED displays were manufactured and delivered to consumers like you and me. And this is what you would see if you were to look at an organic LED display under a microscope, a vast array of red, green, and blue organic light emitting diodes, each occupying an area of approximately 10 microns by 10 microns. And high-end mobile phones typically have a display with a total of approximately 9 million organic LEDs. Which means that last year alone, about five quadrillion organic light emitting diodes were manufactured. Now, if you have ever dropped your mobile phone from a sufficient altitude on a sufficiently hard surface, you might know that the display is made of glass. This is not some ordinary window glass. This is glass manufactured to extraordinary precision in a highly sophisticated process called fusion. And so we'll spend a few seconds looking at this process. Initially, a large ceramic bucket is filled with the raw glass precursor materials, where it is heated to a temperature of significantly above 1,000 degrees centigrade. The molten glass then overflows the bucket and with the kind help of gravity, continuous sheets of perfectly clean, perfectly dimensional glass is being formed. Ideally, this glass is never touched by human until you take the phone out of the package in which you bought it. This is the glass on which the vast majority of flat panel displays are manufactured. The entire fabrication process for the manufacturing of a flat panel display can be basically categorized into four steps. In the first step, an array of electronic circuits consisting of thin film transistors or TFTs is fabricated directly on the surface of the glass substrate. These TFTs, these circuits, have the task of precisely controlling the electric voltage that is applied to each and every one of these millions of organic LEDs and to change this voltage within microseconds according to the image or the video that we are intending to view on the display. In the second step, these electronic circuits are encapsulated and planarized. In the third step, these millions of organic LEDs are fabricated. And in the final step, the entire display is encapsulated. And this is what a modern day display factory looks like. It occupies an area of five, if not 10 square kilometers. It produces millions of square meters of flat panel displays every year, 24 hours a day, 365 days a year. Several dozen such display factories exist, located exclusively in Southeast Asia. But here comes the kicker. Perhaps the most intriguing aspect of organic light emitting diodes is the fact that they can be fabricated on flexible substrates, and that they continue to emit bright light even when sharply bent. And this is what allows us to start thinking about flexible displays. The first question then we have to address is what are we going to use as the flexible substrate? Now, if I asked you, if I told you that glass could be flexible, would you believe me? Well, it turns out that, yes, glass can be made flexible, but it requires the glass to be extremely thin, which causes all kinds of problems and challenges, both in the manufacturing and also in the handling of the glass. So the display industry has taken a different path. They start with a rigid, thick glass carrier, but they first coat it with a thin layer of a very particular polymer, usually polyimide, and then they fabricate the entire display 
electronic circuits, encapsulation, organic LEDs, the works, on the surface of that thin polymer layer. And in the final step, this polymer layer, together with the entire display, is delaminated from the glass carrier. And then, for a brief, fleeting moment in time, we have a fully flexible display. Only for a brief moment, because in the very next step, this flexible display is mounted onto a curved metal heatsink and sealed with curved glass. Now, one reason why the designers love the flexible display is that it gives them opportunities to play with the curved edges of the display, whether you find that useful or not. Another reason is that polymer-based displays tend to be significantly thinner and lighter than glass-based displays, which means that the designer has an additional degree of freedom in determining the dimension and the weight of your mobile phone. But let's face it, despite the fact that the industry calls this a flexible display, to you and me as consumers, it is not a flexible display. It is still a rigid display. And I hope we can all agree that it would be silly to stop here. The next logical step in the evolution of the flexible display is the foldable display, which has been under intense development in all of the major display companies for the last several years and which are beginning to be introduced into the market. Finally, I would like us to take a small glimpse into the future because I believe that the holy grail of flexible displays is the fully rollable, fully bendable display. For the first time, this will give the smartphone designers the freedom to completely decouple the size of the display from the size of the phone, which means that in a not-so-distant future, we may see very compact, very small mobile phones but very large, brilliant displays, all enabled by the phenomenal properties of the organic light-emitting diode. In closing, I would like to return to the question I posed in the beginning. Could the inventors of the organic light-emitting diode, Ching Tang, Stephen Van Slyke, in 1987, possibly have imagined just how profoundly their invention would reshape the way we display and conceive visual information. If you ask me, I will say no. Inconceivable. Thank you for listening.